Hey everyone, it's EJ from iDesign.com and today I'm going to show you how you can animate a folding map or folding brochure. Uh, I see a lot of questions about how to fold uh, paper and stuff like that and a lot of people, you know, the, the thing that probably comes to mind the quickest is the bend deformer or something like that, but uh, usually you don't get really good results with that. So the, the method I'm going to be showing and demonstrating is is going to take a little bit of just basic knowledge of joints and uh, uh, binding joints to geometry. And it's not a very hard concept. It's a little bit intimidating, I'm sure. But just knowing the bare basics of uh, joints and how they work and how you can bind them to just simple geometry like a plane, uh, as we have here, uh, will really go a long way in helping you you know, fold paper and do other things. So... Uh, let's just set the scene right here. So I have a plane uh, with three subdivisions here. So I just create a uh, just a plane object, set the three subdivisions on the width, and then just made it editable and put my little map that I got from Photoshop uh, onto it. So you can see that I have four polygons making up this uh, map. And what I'm going to want to do is create joints, bind joints to each polygon, and then through the joints, be able to kind of rotate the joints and then the geometry or the polygons will then rotate with it or bend with it. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is go to character and get our joint tool. So this is the joint tool. It's going to create joints for us that we can then use to, uh, to animate and bend our polygons here. So what we're going to do is Right now, if you start clicking away in your viewport, nothing's going to happen. And that's because you want to uh, hold down the command key on Mac, and that will actually uh, get things to show up. But first, you want to make sure that your joints are going to be positioned right on the edges of our object here, or edges of our polygon. So to do that, to constrain that, we're going to go to our little magnet here, and this is going to enable snapping. So I'm going to enable snapping, and I'm going to make sure that our edge snap is selected. So with that selected, what I'm going to do is actually have, uh, you, can, you can unfold things a few different ways. This is going to kind of fold like an accordion and kind of fold into the middle. Uh, you can also use this method to kind of have everything kind of fold down and collapse to the right. Uh, but I'm going to show how to actually have everything fold in like an accordion from the center. So I'm going to get, I'm going to hold down the command key and I'm going to click and you're going to see that we just snapped. Let's make sure we did snap this. Oh, I actually turned off edge snap. I need to make sure it's on. There we go. And click and you'll see that we now have our edge snap here and go down to the middle of this object and we'll just click and there we go. So I let go of the command key and the mouse and that created a root and our first joint. But like two points make a line, we need two uh, little joints to actually make a full joint here. So I'm going to again make sure I'm snapped to this edge. I'm going to hit command and click and you'll see that we now created a joint or one visual joint out of these two uh, joint points here. So I'm going to do the same thing and hold down command and create another uh, ending joint over here. So we got two physical like visual joints here, one for each polygon. So what I want to do is actually go into my joints and make sure that these values, these rotation values are even. We don't want any odd rotation values here or any X or Y values. We want everything to be on the same uh, axis line here. Uh, so everything looks good right now. And you would think that you would just go over here and create the other two, but actually there's a really handy tool that we can use. Uh, and if I select these joints, go to character, we actually have this mirror tool. So the origin point I'm going to select as parent. So I want to uh, originate from uh, the parent here and then this mirroring set from plus to minus is good and then I'll just hit mirror and you'll see that this created three new joints that are mirroring the original joint. So let's go in here and this will be our uh, right joint. So I'll just hit R uh, and have a period and R joint one and this will be 
our left joints. So that'll kind of, this is our right joints and our left joints. So now what we can do is we need to remove the root from, uh, from underneath our map. And then what we're going to do is actually we need to bind these joints and kind of fuse them together with each uh, polygon here. And to do that, we're going to select all of our joints, select our map, and there's a function that will actually do that and fuse together or bind together uh, the joints to the geometry. And that is aptly called or aptly named, uh, if I go to character commands, bind. So if I hit bind, you'll see that on our map object here, we have a weight tag and we also have a skin tag. And what the skin tag is going to do is it's going to kind of relay the information, all the movement of our joints and deform our map object here through this skin object. So now if we go to our perspective view, I can go to my right joint. And if I rotate this, you'll see that if you did this correctly, that our joints are now bound to our uh, map. So what I'm going to do to just clean everything up is select all of these joints, go to coordinates, and I'm going to freeze the transformation here. So what that is going to do is transfer all of these values and bring them down to the bottom of this freeze transformation, and basically zero out all of this information. Why is this important? So if we start, you know, moving all this stuff all over the place, so we have our joints, we're bending our joints, uh, moving them all around. What if I want to reset all of this? Now you normally have to just kind of, you know, command Z a bunch of times, but what you can do is actually select all of your joints that you moved, go up to character, go to commands, and go to reset PSR. So reset position scale rotation. So since we froze transformation, we can just zero everything out, and you'll see that everything went back to normal since we did that freeze transformation and trans transferred all of those original values and brought them down to here. So these are the values it had before it saved them, zeroed them all out to the position that it currently uh, is in. And I did a tutorial about freeze uh, transformations uh, and I'll link that to, the, uh, to this tutorial post to get a little bit more information on that. Uh, so now we can actually start animating since everything looks like it was binded correctly. So to do this, <clears throat> we're going to go and use a pose morph tag. So what the pose morph tag is going to do is kind of store this original state, and then we can start moving stuff around and store it as a new state, and then blend between the two. So let's go ahead and do that. First, I'm going to grab uh, all my objects and group them together. So we got my root with all of my joints and my map, and I'll just name this uh, map group. So on this map group, I'm going to right click and go to character tags and that's where you can find a pose morph tag. Now, pose morph tag, I've done a couple tutorials about it, also link in the into this tutorial post. But basically what it does is you can set and define what uh, values you want stored in this tag into each pose and it'll save it into each pose that you set. So for this instance, we're really only going to need rotation since we're only rotating the joints. And then I'll go back into uh, my tag and you can see that that brought us to this uh, mode and actually showed us our base pose. So a base pose that is just the pose that we started out with. And then it automatically creates a new pose that you can then morph into. So let's actually rename this from base pose to uh, unfolded. So this is like our unfolded state right here. And then we'll morph into a folded state. So that's what we're going to be editing and, and morphing into. But first we need to go back to our basic tab uh, because once you choose one of these, it actually automatically dumps you into this tag tab, which is kind of annoying, but so just jump back into the basic tab. And we also need to check on this hierarchy because since we're going to be using and, and rotating uh, a, all of these joints, if we didn't have hierarchy turned on, it would just, this tag would just be looking at the object that it's, that this tag is applied to. So let's turn on hierarchy so it'll actually look at everything, uh, including the null and then everything in its hierarchy. So everything that's a child of it. So I think those are the only two, uh, only two things we have to enable in our mixing tab. We can go back to our uh, pose morph tag tab. And now we can just start with our uh, folded pose selected. We can now start rotating all of these joints to our folded pose. 
So I'm going to select our left joint and make sure I have this band selected and constrain uh, this movement to just that uh, rotation axis because if you don't, you can see we're getting all kind of funky deformation there. So that's bad. Don't want that. So let's just rotate this and I'm holding down shift to kind of constrain it to uh, 10 degree uh, intervals and then I'm going to select joint 2 and then do the same thing and rotate this all the way down to negative 180 and that essentially closes our left uh, side so that folds that left side up. So we're going to do the same exact thing with our right joint and I'm going to rotate this up to ni negative 90 and bring this second joint and rotate this all the way down to 180. So now we have folded completely our map. So that is all stored in this pose right here, this folded pose. So now if we want to animate between the unfolded, the base pose that we started with, and the folded, we simply go to animate, and we can see if we have, if we control this, if we move this slider, we are now sliding between each of our states and blending and morphing between them. So that's pretty cool. So pose morph, really awesome. Uh, so now you simply just need to create two keyframes to essentially animate this map unfolding. So let's say, let's go to frame uh, 30 and that's where our, whoop, I actually selected the wrong thing. So you don't want this. You don't want to click the, the keyframe here because that just enables that, uh, that just turns on or off that pose. What we want to keyframe is this little button here. So I, I've made that mistake before. Glad I made it to show you guys. So we want to keyframe this so that it's at 0%. And then let's go to frame 0 and bring this all the way to 100. And actually, we don't want all the way to 100 because we actually have some uh, geometry intersecting. And that can kind of get janky in your render. So let's just I think a value of uh, 99 should be really good. We don't have any overlap right there. So that looks nice. And then we'll just set a keyframe. So now, if we hit play, we have our, let me bring this timeline down. So now we just have, uh, with two keyframes, we have our map unfolding, which is pretty awesome using the uh, pose morph tag here. So you can, if you want, go to your timeline and we can start adjusting this, uh, this animation curve. So we can adjust the curve so the, uh, the map kind of doesn't have an ease in, uh, the folding just kind of happens and then eases in at the end. And we can also have a little bit of an overshoot if we bring this curve up a little bit higher than 100%. So you can see we have this nice little kind of overshoot uh, of this fold, which is kind of nice if you want that kind of effect. Maybe just a slight thing, uh, just very slight value. So I think that looks good. It just adds that little secondary animation that I think is really, really nice. Uh, so that is uh, basically how you can set up uh, an object, uh, set it up with joints, bind those joints to the polygons you want to fold, and have a map unfolding animation. So you can do it from the center, or you can do the exact same setup minus the mirror tag if you just set your root uh, if you just set the root instead of from the middle, but from this side and get through the same exact workflow, but then you'll just fold up to this area right over here. So the final thing is if I render, you can see I have these nice creases. And that was just a very simple thing that uh, I added in Photoshop. I just created this, uh, this bump map basically in Photoshop that was divided equally, uh, that divided each of the panels into quarters and then just applied it to uh, the bump channel or uh, to the diffusion channel uh, to kind of get those, get these slight um, creases in our scene, in our map. So that kind of helps sell the illusion of this map folding a little bit. And uh, yeah, that was about it. So if you have any questions about this, uh, I'm going to provide this project file that you can download and kind of tear apart. Um, but yeah, that's basically it. Uh, let me actually, I'll go through how, uh, to do this. If you want to unfold it from this, uh, this side over here. So let's go ahead and let's delete everything. Delete all of our joints. Delete, 
delete whoop deleted one too much <clears throat> so we got our map let's uh rotate this back like so all right so we go back to our top view and we're going to just again start drawing some joints and we'll just draw them from this side so our root will be on the rightmost uh, edge right here and we'll create our joints and again we need to make sure all of our rotation values are zeroed out we don't want any odd rotation values so we did pretty good except for that one and that's all fixed so we should have 90 round number and then zero for everything else so everything is nice and straight and then what we're going to do remove the root and again we'll bind this stuff bind the joints to the map so we have all of the joints and the map selected go to character bind and that should work correctly let's go and test so we'll rotate uh, this joint and yep that looks good so then again we'll, we'll group the map and the joints group objects <clears throat> and then we'll just add the pose morph tag and again and again animate the hierarchy and the rotation the base pose unfolded and then our folded pose with our folded pose selected we will then rotate the second joint flip that over rotate the third joint flip that over and then the fourth and we just folded everything up nice and neat so now if we go to animated we should be able to unfold this uh, map like we did before only except from the center or instead of the center we're now folding from this side so you can this this method is very flexible depending on where you put your root uh, object and uh, then you can just animate this again so that is how you can fold uh, geometry or fold maps or brochures using joints skin object and animate it with the pose morph tag and that's it thanks for watching guys